And this is Wes Weimer here with a video guide for programming assignment one, the Rosetta Stone. And this is an alternate video guide for writing depth first search in Cool. In the primary video guide, we were very nice to Cool, used object oriented features, distributed functionality across classes, implemented abstraction using inheritance. We were very nice people, and the program took forever and it was really hard to follow. And this time, we are just going to hack it out. We're going to implement depth first searching Cool using imperative features like a while loops that go over lists. We're going to have null checks rather than using special classes. Indeed, we'll actually only have one other class in the program, and we will do all of the work in main. This is the life is short version. Rather than bending to Cool's will, we will bend it to ours. All right. So if I have to make an imperative depth first search cool program, I will call it IDFS. We'll put a little comment at the top, just in case there's some sort of issue. Class main inherits IO uh, because we need to be doing some uh, printing. Every class in cool ends with a semicolon. We've got our main method, which returns an object. Sometimes you want to do a lot of things in main, so we make it a block. And let's say, and I'm doing this even though it's unrelated to DFS just because Cool is so obnoxious with the semicolons that I want to make sure it even compiles. Oh, great. All right, so we've recreated Hello World. Now it's time to add our promised list class. And unlike last time, we're not going to have any um, you know, abstract interfaces that we do during inheritance. This is just going to be a relatively simple list of tuples or singleton strings. To save time, uh, even though sometimes we want uh, singletons for the visited set and sometimes we want tuples for edges, we'll just always do tuples and sometimes this is left blank and <laughs> sometimes not use B. Right? Uh, and then there's a next pointer which goes to a list. And there is an init method which takes a new A, uh, class names are always capitalized in cool, a new B, and a new next and returns a list. This is like a constructor. Our A gets new A, our B gets new B, our next gets new next, uh, and then we return ourselves. This is kind of like calling our, our superclass constructor. In cool, all of your fields are private by default. Even your friends can't see them. So we'll need accessor methods for all of these. I could write get A, but I am so lazy that I will just write A. And we return A, B, and next. And by the way, next is not a string. It's a list. Notice that since I'm only doing one thing in here, I didn't need to do this block stuff. Let's see if this still compiles. Parse error 28. Oh, every class in cool also ends with a semicolon. Type check. Class list has method in it with formal parameter of unknown type tail. That's, of course, because I... <laughs> cannot spell. Uh, new next is a list. All right, love it. So we have our type definition, but we're not doing anything with it. So let's read in a list of edges. And rather than having edges be a local variable, if we're going to hack it, why don't we have edges be a, a class instance variable? And since it's in main, it's effectively a, a, a global variable. Right there are all of our edges. And now we're going to have some sort of loop. We loop until we're done reading in. So initially, we're, we're still reading in stuff. And then while we are reading, remember every loop ends with pool. All right. We're going to have A be some input we read from the user, and B be some input we read from the user. Remember in cool, the way we tell if the input failed is that it uh, will return the empty string. All right. So if B is the empty string, then we are done reading. However, um, if it's not, then we want to add this to our list of edges. So edges is going to be uh, just like edges from before, conceptually, but we're going to cons on something to the beginning. We'll make a new list cell and initialize it so that it holds A, B, and edges. Let's see if this uh, program compiles. We won't be able to see because we never print out the list, but you know. Um, can we run it on our simple graph? Ah, and it seems to work. It says, hello world. But I want to do a little more testing than that. I want to print out the list. 
But instead of adding that functionality to class list where it belongs, I'm going to hack this up and add it to main because you can. Suppose you want to uh, print out a list. Every uh, method definition also ends with a semicolon. We're going to write this uh, you know, sort of um, if L is null, then skip. Otherwise, print L and uh, sorry, uh, print L dot head and then call ourselves on L dot tail. This is conceptually what we're doing here. Right? But we're going to do it in cool. And the way we do a null check in cool is is void. Right. So if it's void, then we want to do nothing. Uh, we'll just return our self because we have to return something since it's a well-typed language and self is something we have in scope. Uh, otherwise, we'll want to do a number of things. So we'll have a little block in here. Right. Um, <clears throat> we will print out the, uh, the A part of L, the B part of L. We'll use lowercase letters. We'll print out a new line, and then we will call ourselves recursively. Did we call it next or tail? We called it next. All right. On our next pointer. So there's a standard sort of for loop, while loop, recursive uh, print function. And let's just see if that's working. After hello world, we will print the list of edges. Syntax error. Ah, because this is a block, the last thing in it has to end with a semicolon. All right, and there are our edges. Uh, a goes to B and B goes to C. I could have printed spaces between them or whatever, but I'm not going to bother. All right. So now uh, we actually want to do uh, depth first search. Uh, so let's make in main, because why not, a depth first search method. And it needs to know where we are and where we're going and what we visited. Right. And in the past, we were very nice and we returned a list uh, corresponding to uh, you know, what we'd seen to get there. But actually, this time, uh, let's be even hackier. Let's just print it out when we get there. There might be multiple ways to reach the definition. So this, uh, uh, if we reach dest from source, then print out the path. Right, um, so we will add a little field that indicates whether we've already printed out the answer, so that we only print it out once. Right. So our depth first search maneuver, we probably want to do a lot of things, so let's make it a block. Uh, one of the first things we'll want to do is check to see if uh, visited contains source. Well, let's just write that up. Here, we could put it in list, but why do that? Uh, see if a list contains a string. All right. And if the list is void, then it does not contain this string. Otherwise, we'll have a little block here. Right. If the lists a method is equal to the a we're looking for, then we found it. Otherwise, we call ourselves recursively on the next part of the list. So if the visited list contains where we currently are, then there's nothing to do. So we'll just return self. Uh, otherwise, um, we can keep checking, you know, maybe we've succeeded. Uh, check to see if source is equal to desk, that sort of thing. But actually, at this point, I'm just going to run it through uh, the cool, uh, you know, sort of type checker to see if our code still compiles. All right, code still seems to be working. So this was our uh, we didn't find it condition, right? But maybe we did find it. If uh, source equals desk, notice that every cool if has an else. Yeah? Uh, then it is potentially time to print out the answer, right? That we, we got there and we found it. But remember that we only want to print it out once to avoid having a, you know, sort of a bunch of garbage output. So uh, let's just check that out. Uh, if we have not printed it, right? uh, then, well, since we have to do a lot of printing, that'll probably be a block, right? Um, 
If we have not printed it, then we want to print out the visited list and also print out the current node. And I can't quite figure out uh, in what order we should do that, so I'll just do it once and test it and then flip the order if that doesn't work out. So let's say that we want to uh, print out where we are now and then print a new line. And then we will print out the visited list and we will indicate that we've printed this so that we never do that again. Let us never speak of that again. Right. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, I don't know, we'll do nothing. Let's see if this type checks. Right. Type check seems to work. All right, if source is not equal to dest, this is where we want to iterate over all of the edges. All right, and consider taking any of them source. All right. And here we'll do it really imperatively, like no recursion at all. We will essentially write you know, a for loop. In some other language like C, you'd say something like um, edge pointer is edges, um, while edge pointer is not null, edge pointer equals edge pointer dot next, right? This is some sort of like a iterator style, right? We could have written the code like that. Well, let's do that in cool. We can have an edge pointer, right? And uh, <clears throat> we'll just uh, keep checking, you know, uh, while not is void edge pointer loop pool. What do we do in here? Well, if the edge pointer is not void, then it is safe to call its A method. And if that is equal to where we are now, Right. then we can call ourselves recursively. Right. We will want to also call DFS on edge pointer B. We follow the edge. The destination remains unchanged. Oh, and we need a new visited set. Well, we just make a new list, and I will initialize it so that it contains um, source, where we are now, uh, nothing. I'm hacking it up. We're not using the second part of the tuple. And then it points to the old visited set. Right. So we're just calling depth first search there as well. If that finds it, it will print it out. Right? But then control is going to fall through here. If this doesn't, then we skip it. Now, currently, this loop will go forever because we never change edge pointer. We never do this. Right? So uh, if we want to do that, we'll want to make this a block. And then edge pointer gets edge pointer next. All right. Uh, and this else, just for clarity, we will also make a block, at which point this needs a semicolon at the end of it. Let's see if this code still compiles. 68. All right. Uh, this was a block, so the previous line needs a semicolon. All right. So where were we in main? Instead of printing out the edges, Let's call depth first search, and I want to get from A to C, and we need some sort of visited set. Um, so uh, we'll just make up one. You can't actually write null in cool. The only way to get a null variable is to make a variable and fail to initialize it. All right. So let's see how this goes. <clears throat> oh, not. Um, the reason it can't see this is because this let is only binding to this while loop. If we want everything to be in scope, we need to, you guessed it, add another block. All right, let's see how well this works. 89, parse error near. Well, since this ends a block, we need a semicolon at the end of the previous line. All right, and it says we got there via ABC. Well, we're printing out the path in reverse order, but that's not a huge deal. Now, we also had, you may recall from our, our previous videos, uh, this graph here. Well, let's see if it's really working by trying it out on a more complicated graph. We called that the, um, I don't know, what graphs did we have lying around? Um, that was our simple web graph. All right. But remember that the simple web graph starts at S and goes to E. So we will start at S and go to E. Simple web graph. And it says the path is S, C, D, E. Let's check that out. S, C, D, E. That totally works. But remember, to make our testing just a, a skosh more rigorous, 
we removed this CD edge. And that was simpleweb2.graph. And now it says SCABE, SCABE. Uh, again, that's not the most efficient path. If we wanted the most efficient path, we would write Dijkstra's algorithm. But this totally works for depth first search. So here we've written a much simpler, cool program. Uh, where we've used a very imperative style, even though cool is an object-oriented language. We have conceptually a global variable for all the edges in our graph. We could have put this print functionality in the list class, but we did it here recursively, null check otherwise. We could have done this with a, a while loop, the same way we did below. Our contains function, we also wrote in main. It uses accessor functions of the list to see if things are there. And our depth for search, rather than returning the path, uh, uses some sort of global state to only print out the answer once. If we would be in some sort of infinite loop, return and stop. If we're done and we haven't printed things out, print them out. Otherwise, and here's the real heart of the matter, we implement something that looks like a C or Java style sort of iterator for loop. Right? We're going to walk over all of the edges with our edge pointer like an edge iterator. Starts out pointing to all of the edges and while it's not null, we keep doing edge pointer gets edge pointer dot next. Well, here's how we do that in cool. We start out by pointing to all of the edges. While it's not null, null is called void in cool. Our null check is is void. Right? If this is an edge that we could take from the current source node, we call ourselves recursively. More on that in just a bit. And then down here at the end, we're just doing edge pointer gets edge pointer dot next. Cool doesn't actually have a for loop, so you have to split out the three parts of the for loop. When we call ourselves recursively, since we've taken the edge from A to B, we're now standing on B. We always try to reach the same destination. Indeed, I could have made destination a global variable, but I couldn't bring myself to make it that ugly. Uh, and then we needed to make a new visited set I could have had a new visited local variable here, but we can just uh, make it inline. Right. And then down here to read things in, we want to read things until we're done. So I made this uh, a little uh, Boolean condition variable. Read in A, read in B, check to see if the reading failed. And then if it didn't, right, init is sort of like our constructor. We make a new list cell, which would initially be full of null pointers, but we uh, set it up so that it holds A, B, and then points to edges, and edges starts off being void or null. So this all works. We only needed a very simple list class. It has two data elements and a, a next or a tail pointer. Here's our initializer, sort of like a constructor, right? Set A, set B, set next, return self. This part is actually uh, critical. Uh, if we didn't return self, um, I don't know, this edges list would always be null or something bad would happen. And then down here we have our three accessor functions. And that was it. This was an imperative, quick implementation uh, in Cool. And then I encourage you to check out the uh, other video for Cool to see sort of a, a slower, gentler introduction to how we might do this in a nice manner.